So we're here again. We're coming to the final few demonstrations of the day. Um, and our penultimate demonstration today is by the legend and uh, the man himself, Brian Meller. But before that, as usual, we will go to one of our hospitality action videos. Please give very, very generous to this, guys. And after this, we've got a, a very, very interesting thing for you. So let's have a look at hospitality action first. Ami Hoyle, catering manager. Peter Molar, doorman. Ricardo Oliva, concierge. Ulrich Edwards, concierge assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, cafe owner. Ioana Georgiou, junior sous chef. Nuno Pinto, bartender. Mark Black, head porter. Andrea Demir, receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, apprentice chef. Federica Pinna, pastry chef. Sabino Mazzone, pastry chef. Himeri Bochke, barista supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, sushi head chef. Mitchell Collier, duty manager. Anna Grabczewska, public area cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong? So here we are, guys. We're live with the legend that is the chef, Brian Meller. Hi, Brian. All right, chef. Give me a bit of a build up there. Well, you know, you're worth it. <laughs> Welcome to sunny South Cheshire. South Cheshire, loving it. It's always like this here, chef. Oh. Sunny Hill. Never rains. <laughs> so I said just before we joined. And we've got a little bit of interesting news for the guys out there. Um, what we're going to do for hospitality action? You tell us your bit first, Brian. What we want to do just to try and ramp it up a little bit. If you uh, make a donation to hospitality action on on our just giving page, uh, that will automatically put you into a raffle to win a session here at the cookery school. And uh, I think it's a minimum of ten pound, but just check that. Uh, so it's like buying a raffle ticket, but donating to the charity at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a win-win for people out there at the end of the day. They'll be donating to an amazing cause and plus getting the chance to win an amazing cookery session with you at Heart Hill as well, which is really, really cool. Oh, we seem to have lost you. You seem to have frozen a little bit there. Oh, you're back in with us now. Cool, cool. But then also on the flip side of it, my good news is so, um, I've just been on to my general manager, Gordon Cartwright, who's a massive... Massive name in the, the hospitality industry and is a big supporter of hospitality action also. And he's allowed me to give away um, a night at Lumley Castle for two people, including dinner. That'd be fantastic. So two chances to win then. Absolutely. Two, two, two bites of the cherry, if that's what you want to call it. And we're taking pledges of over £10 on the hospitality action page. And anybody that donates over £10 will get put into that draw. Uh, I think I've just been talking to Sean Noonan, who's the brains behind this thing. And we'll draw that next Saturday. So we'll be back on these pages next Saturday to draw that and um, to try and give it as much um, time as possible to be able to get as much money in there possible for this amazing charity. Fabulous. Let's hope so. So do you want to do some grilling? Grilling? Well, there's no better time to do grilling. What I'll do is I'll disappear into the background, bring you to the front of the screen, and let's have a look. All right. We'll chat to Craig before, and he said, what, you've got like five barbecues on the go? And... Uh, not because I'm going to do a massive amount of food, just because I want to show you a few different things. So uh, while we do this as well, if you want to send any messages or questions in, Craig's manning the, uh, manning the desk, so he'll just uh, shout them out to me. So uh, And then it's good to know that you're watching as well. You'd be very pleased to know we have our stalker back, Peter Callahan. <laughs> Hi, Pete. Um, so he was fiddling about with the stream the other day. He couldn't quite get it, so we had to help him out. Bless him. Um, so I've got here a smoked cauliflower so there's, there's a bit I've obviously done ahead um, so I'm going to show you how to smoke and I'm going to show you how to smoke beef I'm going to pop this back on now this is quite dark because uh, we've used hickory in there as well so it gives off quite a dark colour as well quite a big flavour so that's been smoked with hickory and apple wood and then I've got some sage thyme and another butter on there later like a cassoulet dish and i'm going to split it 
So I'm going to do one vegetarian dish as well. So don't let me forget the veggie. We won't. We'll remind you. We have a viewer from Australia. Wendy Carter de Pascal is a hello from Melbourne, Australia. So this Bye, barbecue man. better be on point, Brian, really, because we've got some uh, Australians viewing. I know there's no pressure. Let's do the uh, the beef. What I've what I've done, I've got a brisket on there. I've done a brisket and I've also done um some short ribs. Now the short ribs come as a sheet of four. Um what I've done, I've cut them into fingers if you like. So these are from actually from over that hill there. So this is from Holy Cow, who are in the food tent at the festival as well. And this is native British red pole beef. It's all grass fed. And it gets to about two years of age and they judge, judge it when they're ready. They don't just have a, a sort of cut-off point to say that's it. But when the animal's ready and it goes off to a, a butcher, many of us know, Callum Edge on the Wirral, uh, who ages it. And, you know, he does it uh, sort of by eye, by checking the carcass. And what you get is this beautiful meat that I, you can smell the quality in, in, in the meat. So short ribs and brisket is what we're, we're cooking with today. This has been sat in beer. If I just flip it over, it's a bit like a fellow. So this has been sat in beer, marinated in beer. So obviously it goes a bit pale. I've deliberately left it the top side out just so you can see the difference. So that's when you when you prepare this on the inside of the ribs, you get a membrane like this. So you need to pull that membrane off. Otherwise, you can get like a chewy product. And then we just chew. there right so the the rub that's going on this now what hopefully you're recording this because what i've done obviously just put the ingredients around the outside just to help me remember and i'm hoping some major crockery manufacturer is going to pick up on this and i'm going to get my own range of barbecue plates out so yeah one and a half tablespoons of sea salt half a tablespoon of garlic powder half a tablespoon of celery salt two teaspoons of oregano and a tablespoon of freshly ground black pepper. Is that for the benefit of us or is that for the benefit of you because you can't remember? Second one, Craig. <laughs> You're going to see a lot more of that through this, Dem. So that's the rub put together. Um, some people like to put a bit of oil on there. Okay, I like to use... And I am joking, folks. That's oil in there. It's not Jack Daniels. <laughs> okay. So we put a little bit of oil on there just to sprinkle onto that beef. I'm not using all that rub. Now, normally, I'd leave that for about an hour just to set on, and then you can get it onto the grill. So we're going to go around into the... Uh, Smoky Mountain cooker now. Take that off. I'll just put that rib on. So this is exactly the way that we did the brisket earlier. I'm going to show you the brisket because it's resting. I've got a few ribs on there now as well, which need to come off. So what we do, let's get those ribs off first, actually. So, so what I can tell you is that the brisket went on at midday today and the short ribs went on at midday and they had three hours in smoke and then we made little parcels foil parcels put some of that beer marinade back in and they've been braising in beer for another three hours now so I'll put them to one side for now And just while we're just while we're inside here, this murky looking water, uh, we put we put water into this into the smoker. So you'll see we've got the fuel at the bottom, the briquettes at the bottom, and the water, and then the the ribs higher up. So if you could let me let me explain a little bit about that. You'll see on a, a normal grill. 
that the fuel is quite close to it, where the fuel is quite a distance from what we're actually cooking or smoking up here. And the heat's got to get through that water as well. So this is all about low and slow cooking. So we cook this and smoke it round about 125 degrees C. So it's all about low, slow cooking. And what we use, we pre-soak them in a bit of water. This is hickory and apple wood. So hickory is quite a strong smoke. Apple's a bit sweeter. So we just mix it up a little bit. Pop them in there. So what does soaking in the water do, Brian? What does that do for the... I, I would imagine it won't burn if, you, if, you, if they're wet, would it? <laughs> what, what actually happens is that... So we're going to smoke some cauliflower as well, but we're using wood chips for that. Now, what happens when you put dry wood onto hot coals or charcoal, it combusts. So what we want it to do is smolder. So if it just combusts and goes up in flames... You're going to get a very different flavour than the one you're looking for. You get a lot of charring. Right, let me talk, let's. If we come to this one, we can talk about lighting your barbecue. And apologies, some of you may already know this, but um, this is what we call a chimney starter got a little gas uh, gap at the bottom you light the Weber fire lighter and then it just burns upwards and within 15 minutes you're ready to go that's it so it's the safest and easiest way to light your barbecue to light your grill just let that do its thing now go off have a coffee do something else come back tip the, the, the fuel out and you're good to go because sometimes barbecues can take hours to go, can't they? So these Weber chimneys are kind of a real quick method of lighting the coals, aren't they, and getting them to where you want them to be quicker, because there's nothing worse than waiting for your barbecue to actually get to the temperature you need it to be, is there? What, what I should have said is that we're one of 10 uh, Weber Grill Academies in the UK and Ireland. So normally this time of year, we'd have about a group of 16 out here, and we'd be cooking, taking them through some barbecue techniques. Um, and what people generally say is like, oh, I just get like loads of fuel, tip it in. Four hours later, I'm a little bit tiddly. The wife's not talking to me. The kids are crying, but it's it's perfect for cooking on. So how you control the heat in your grill is generally by the amount of fuel that you put in. I don't know if Mary can just come, come in sure, now. Sorry. So if I was doing something that was raging hot, I'd fill that chimney starter up, but because I'm, I'm going to make the uh, the bean stew in here, so because I'm, I'm just doing the bean stew, it's only about a third full. So the amount of fuel that you put into your grill dictates the, the temperature that's in there. Right, I've got a bit of a confession to make, Craig. Pop this in. Go on then. Tell all. <laughs> we... Uh, I know this is a virtual food festival, but we have got a bit of an audience with us today. So we've allowed the audience, they are socially distant, so it's just nice to be working in front of an audience. So Mary will just uh, pan round and just uh, show you some of our guests that we've got here. I can't see. Very good, very interesting. I like, hello guests. Yeah. Hopefully you're all looking forward to a, a bit of good nosh after after Brian's done this. <laughs> Are they going to give us a bit of a song after as well? We've got the red hot chili peppers there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do, uh, yeah. You notice that they're socially distanced. Right, so we're now just going to do the... Put the chips onto the lump wood. We've just had a comment here saying someone loves the time it takes for a barbecue to heat up because it gives him a chance to have a beer. 
Sorry, I missed that. Say again, Craig. We've got sorry. Martin Hilton. Martin Hilton always likes the time it takes for a barbecue to heat up, which gives him a chance to have a beer, like you said. He always ends up a bit tiddly before your barbecue's hot. Do you know, if there's anyone you're going to have a beer with, it's going to be Mr. Hilton. Um, he was doing the, the beer talk and tasting yesterday in the, uh, in the tent. We're also, would you believe, in these times, we're opening a pub together. That sounds it's like an interesting be... venture. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So look, I'll, I'll just go very quickly through. What I've done, I've put some oil on the cauliflower uh, because smoke likes fat. So just put that oil on and it'll just trap some of the, the, uh, the smoke in there. Yeah, so between myself, Martin, and a third guy who I think is also watching, Richard. Hello, Richard, if you're watching. Um, we're opening a pub down the road in the village, two miles away. Um, and I'm, I'm calling it the Pub Plus because it's just going to have so much amazing food, beer, rooms, and other things going on around there. So um, really looking forward to that. And as I said, Martin is a, a trained beer sommelier as well. So if there's anyone you're going to have a beer with, that's the one you're going to, that's the person you're going to do it with. That sounds right, like an still... amazing profession or an amazing job title to have a beer sommelier. Yeah, teaching people to taste beer. Right, quick wipe down. And then if we come to the Genesis, what I'm going to do here, got a couple of bread rolls. Look at this side. Yeah. So what I've done on this one, this is going to be, um, you can bake on a barbecue. And what I've done, I've turned that middle jet of gas jet off. So I've got two side burners going. So basically, lid down, you've created an oven. So that's it. Got an oven going there. Bake that bread. That's that. We'll go back over to... <laughs> Chasing each other around the terrace. Now the brisket, we come back to the brisket, okay, which you've not seen yet. You saw the rub that we put onto the um, the ribs, and that was quite quite a simple rub. If you look at the one that we put onto the brisket, a lot more complex, a lot more going on. So black peppercorns and pink peppercorns. I'll come back to the sugar, coriander that gives it that kind of lemony zesty hit smoked paprika for some depth of flavour, a tablespoon of garlic powder, some dried dill, English mustard, a teaspoon of celery salt. And what we do is we whiz all that together, break the seeds down, uh, mix it with the other ingredients, and then put it onto the brisket like you saw me put it onto the, onto the rib. The sugar is something that just kind of locks it all in and just gives it a nice glaze. So that's quite different to the uh, the beef rub that we used on the ribs. Pop this over here out the way. And we'll come back to the board and get on with some making this bean cassoulet. Yeah, just put it on there for now. And then, yeah. Sorry, it's facing me. Craig, can you see my board? Okay, Craig, I'm not sure if you can, you're still with us or you can hear me. Yep, still with you. It's just run inside for the charger, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a den without a problem, would it? Absolutely not. Technical issues. Can you see my chopping board? 
No, I can't. I can just see the top of your hands and just the very, very edge of the top of that ball. Okay. If you give us 30 seconds, we'll have it sorted. I'll just um, remove the little ticker. I can see a bit more without the ticker, so... Funny, you know, I check, checked before and the phone was fully charged, but it just seems to have eaten away at it now. I think we've just lost you a second now. I think you might be having a bit of a technical issue with the the Wi-Fi feed possibly. Oh, oh, he's back. Yeah, we're back, mate. Good. All right. Look, this is where the cauliflower was and the smoke billowing out the barbecue. This is good smoke. This is purposeful, intended smoke, yeah? So that's the wood chips that we put, we put on there. This barbecue, I'm going to make my bean stew on. So what I've got here is charcoal baskets. And it just means... <laughs> Sorry, there's chaos going on in the background. Um, so I'm going to put the uh, the uh, the lump wood charcoal divided between those two baskets, um, and that allows us you can push the baskets together and do some direct cooking, which is what we're going to do, or you can pull them apart either side and have indirect cooking. And I'll explain a bit more about that in a second. This little barbecue over here, this is um, this is what thirty seven. So thirty seven relates to the cooking cooking surface. These are all 57s, okay, so you get a bigger cooking surf surface. What's happening in this barbecue, I'm hoping, just might change your barbecue life. Um, so I'm going to reveal that shortly. Um, so little 37, this is my little workhorse um, because, you know, just two of us here. If you fancy a little barbecue, then like that, and uh, it's, it's just dead easy to work with. Okay, let's go through. The ingredients for this bean stew then so just prior to lockdown um, i made a garlic oil so that's just the uh, garlic blitzed in with oil a little bit of lemon juice the necessary onion so we're going to finely dice the onion and then um put that into the uh the cassoulet dish i've got butter beans so all the purists amongst you'll be like no cassoulet haricot beans whatever you've got and these are just tinned beans so What's really good about these is it's going to soak all the flavours up that we're going to put into there. So onion, garlic oil, some chopped tomato, um, tomato passata, and then actually I've got some pork that I've like really slowly cooked at a low temperature. And I've cooked that with cumin, origa, uh, cumin and coriander. Okay, so that's our bean stew. And then some herbs from out the garden, some thyme, some sage, there's chives. Tarragon's gone mad. So tarragon's starting to, uh, to look like spinach. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Thank you. Right, so we're just getting recharged. It's all very real. Nothing virtual about what's going on there. Right, so. So we've just had a question from Peter Callahan, Brian. Brian, do you ever yeah. use just wood and not coal on the Smoky Mountain? Very interesting. Very good question. Right, Pete, I'll tell you what. Let me, let me do this now and we'll get this out of the way because the type of fuel that you use is important, okay? So... See my knees on plus, Craig. Yeah, so so I don't get dirty hands. <laughs> right, <clears throat> charcoal briquettes. Um, okay, these will yeah. burn for up to three hours. Okay, so uh, we use the chimney starter. We light them. They burn burn for up to three hours. Lump wood, very different, different shapes, different sizes, burns faster. 
burns hotter. So because we're doing Peter low and slow on here, we want a more even burn rather than something that's raggedy and raging. So a nice steady three hour burn and we set up minion rings and uh, make it a bit differently so that we, we get it burns out slow because that's like a six hour cook there. So Craig, it gives me a chance to do my really crap joke. When I was a young chef, yeah, we were all a bit more, a bit more fiery, a bit more raging, a bit more faster. So they, that, was, that was my lumpwood years, yeah. So I was a bit lumpwood when I was a young chef. Now I've got a cookery school, yeah. We need a slower, more even, understanding burn. So I'm now in my charcoal briquette years. <laughs> You've got a long time before you burn out, though, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's get this cassoulet on the go, okay? So these these mitts, these gloves are brilliant. So the chimney starter, we just leave the handle hanging outside. Tip it between the baskets. And then you can actually just, we're going to pull those baskets together. So this is a real showcase in barbecue in this. I mean, most people just think you chuck sausage in barbecues and get them a bit gritty and dirty when they fall off the side of it. So, but there's a real art to barbecuing, isn't there? Do you know what, Craig? We started working with Weber um, four or five years ago. And... It's just opened my eyes to what you can do on, on there. I mean, we bake, we bake cakes and do puddings on there. Um, and once you understand that really it's about lid down cooking, um, it just becomes so much more versatile. This is not Jack Daniels. Do not add Jack Daniels. To a hot pan, okay? Right, bit of knife work now. Back on the board. Sharp object, soft tissue. The idea is not to cross them over. All right. So, and you know, Craig, you be the same. Every young chef that you ever employed wants you to know that they're the best thing that you've ever employed. So what happens when they're chopping, they make a noise, don't they? Constantly for hours on end. And it starts to grate on you in a bit. So what happens on a cook's knife, you've got a curve like that. So chop the onion. Halfway up. And then you can just roll the knife through. And that's a lot better for the blade as well, isn't it, rather than smashing it against the board all the time? I think so, yeah. And what you cut with, what you cut on, is as important as you cut with. So these things, if you've got these things at home that they call the glass chopping boards, get them in the recycling, they're just going to damage your knife. And these are the tools of our trade, so you just, you just need to look after them. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, so this is going to form the base of uh, of our bean stew. So we're going to sweat the onions off, add the garlic into there. So Sean Noonan is beginning up here a little bit. We've got Brian Miller does some amazing classes at the Hart Hill Cookery School. Who was that? Sean. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. Right. So onions in. I'm going to just do the garlic. Again, I'm just ro I'm rolling the knife through there. The knife's not coming off the chopping board. Good. 
just give you a little update of where we are with hospitality action, Brian. We're at 530 pounds now. 530. Yeah. That's Is that with gift aid? No, that's just donations. That's not with gift aid on top. Oh, that's good. It's creeping up then. Thank you. Thanks, it is. everybody. There's 112 pounds of gift aid to go on top of that. Fab. I just I just really hope we can do it by the end of the festival. I know the page is gonna stay open, but if we could do it by tonight, that would be brilliant. That would be would, wouldn't it? Cake. Tomato, I'm gonna to chop the same way, same way as the onion. So if you if you've got a sharp knife, you'll just be able to do this. Just makes it so much easier. That's a test of a good knife, isn't it? Going and being able to go through a tomato skin very easily. So, we have a very good friend, and you may have seen him at festivals. Goes under the name of the the knife sharp and the guy, and that's how he does it. He, he just does tomatoes and shows people, and um, people will say to him, uh, "But it's just a tomato. It's easy." Actually, a tomato is quite chick, quite tricky. Because you've got to get through the skin first and then you're into that sort of soft, soft flesh. <laughs> Mary's getting smoked out. <laughs> you can you can see what's happening here, obviously in the smoky mountain cooker. It's billowing out the smoke. So that is it's great for flavour, it's great for colour. Um, it just you smell smoked for, for weeks afterwards, right? I think we'll go on to this this one, this little 37, and show what's been going on there. So, I said this might just change a little barbecue game. So, if I show you what I haven't had a look in here since we started, but okay. So, I've had sausages, I don't know how long we've been going. 20 25 minutes so those sausages have just been sat there cooking there's no flames there's... i've got the fuel just on the left hand side here and the lid on it creates an oven so the heat's just circulating around there if you wanted to do what you call a reverse sear then you can just put them over the fuel source now And the trick is, firstly, really good quality sausages. So they need an amount of fat in there, but they don't need to be loaded with fat. You don't prick the sausage because what that does is then release the fat onto the hot fuel. And that's where you get the combustion. And then the other thing that you don't do is have the lid off. Because with the lid off, you've got oxygen going in there and it's just going to start to, to flame up. So we'll take those we'll take those sausages off. Sorry. So these are beef, tomato, and basil sausages. Again, off holy cow. The brisket. I still haven't showed you the brisket. We come up just up over here to the board. Big reveal. Okay. So this has been in smoke for three hours and then braised in. Ready? Essential cuisine veal glaze. Yeah. So we've got to get essential cuisine and keep young chefs safe. Thanks for all your support, guys. So this has got the uh, the rub on there. Say three hours in smoke, three hours braised, and that's just rested nicely now. So we'll carve that just before we go. <clears throat> Do you like me, um, my 80s dishcloth? 80s neon glowing dishcloth. 
Did you go to the party last night, Craig, so to speak? I did, yeah. I mean, I was there. I think I was one of the last ones up, if I'm honest. I was there till the end. Yeah. Really good. Good music last night. We've had some fantastic participation from all sorts of people on this thing, and it's just been amazing to see how everyone's come together. It is, I think. Well, I've got a tear in my, in my eye now from the smoke, but I think by the end of this, I'll, I'll be having a little weep. Right, last few bits going in. A little bit of chilli for heat. Sorry. Okay. A little bit of that garlic oil. Passata. We'll get some of our butter beans in there just to start taking up those flavours. And then our final thing is some veg stock. <coughs> Craig, if we ever do this again, remind me not to do a smoking dem. Okay, no problem. <laughs> There you go. Okay. So that's just going to sit and simmer for sort of 10 minutes now. Um, we've got a bay leaf out the garden. Okay, come back to the board then, mate. Checking on the audience, how the audience is doing. They're absolutely riveted to the seats. <laughs> was it that was it them that were getting rowdy before? Yeah. It's one way we're guaranteed not to lose an audience member. <laughs> okay, so Okay, so we'll do ready to put our first one. They're not dishes. I was just trying to show you some some techniques. So we're going to do a. Now I'm always we always say we're always learning, aren't we? So I was with Paul Askew yesterday, and basically he said that he likes people. He likes to plate the food up as it faces the way it would face the diner, which is something that we all know. So what I've done just as a little aid memoir, yeah. I'll put an arrow on there so I know which way I'm, I'm facing the food. And that's pointing towards the north, which we all love. And then on here is going to go a sausage balm, bat, bread cake, roll, nudger, butty, sarmi. I'm not getting involved, yeah? Whatever you call it, it's up to you. All of the above. What do you call it, Craig? Uh, a butty, if I'm honest. Okay, so we just grab one of those rolls off. So this bread has been cooked on the barbecue? Yeah, indirectly. Do you know, as I was saying the other day, Brian, every day is a school day. I think this is another school day for me. Yeah. Well, yesterday for me was uh, pikelet and crumpet. We never stop learning. There you go. So your bread rolls cooked on the um, on the barbecue. Sausage is cooked indirectly. And because we're chefs, we've got to have an even distribution of sauces. Okay, that one's got, who's that guy, the Italian one, Massimo. Massimo Bocciuto? Yeah. Just don't drop it. The first, yeah. the first bit is a tribute to Massimo, and then the last bit's an even distribution. <laughs> okay, so let's put that one out of the way.
So we've got a nice compliment here from a, a good friend of mine and yours, Mr. Chef Legend Matt Davis. The legend, the gentleman, Chef Brian Meller, a true ambassador of a wonderful industry. Stunning job there, Chef. Cheers, Chef. We were saying yesterday, we hope to see you soon. Um, and there's just been so many beautiful messages coming out from, from chefs and people round and about during these, these two days. It's been wonderful to be part of. Okay. These are the short ribs. Now, they're done. Okay, so that has that, that very simple rub on that we showed you before. Uh, some thyme from out the garden. And then you can just see you've got nice shrinkage away from the bone there. It's nice and tender. What I am going to do with one of them is just glaze it. Look at that, just, just coming away. That looks melting in the mouth, that. Yeah, I think it's a real chef's chef's ingredient, isn't it? Well, we can just pop a bit of... Um... This is a barbecue sauce that we smoke, we make at the school. Pop those two out of the way. Should we check in on the cauliflower? Right, so you can see what's happened there. We're starting to get a little bit of colour on it. So because this is apple wood, it's actually um, a lot lighter than the hickory. Zoom in on the castle. I'm going to split that up now. Touch, touch more liquid in that castle. So, what I'm going to do, Craig, is just divide this up now so we can do uh, a vegetarian version that can go with the cauliflower. And then finish this off with the with the meat in here. And the reason I'm doing a vegetarian version is uh, my two daughters are vegetarian. Okay. So, so this is the pork that's been cooked with cumin, coriander, a little bit of chilli, belly pork. Just And then we, not, we try not to waste anything. So, so we've got the, the juices that the pork has been cooked in. Okay. Just to remind me, this is unvegetarian. All right. So it's meat juices, unvegetarian, full of flavor. And some of, the delicious, that, that, some of that delicious pork fat going in there as well. Yeah, a little bit of fat in there as well, mate. And then what I'm going to do is pop into that some of those beef sausages as well. Oh, I just naturally done that thing that we do. I just cut them on an angle. I've just, just fluted them.
Okay, and then they can go into that. And what I'm going to do here, Craig, is just split those charcoal baskets. So we get a more subtle heat now. And they just allow it to be, the grill to be much more versatile. Let that go another few minutes and that'll be ready to plate up. And then we're going to go to the vegetarian. So we go on the board. It's not reverse this, you know. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Right, so what you can do, if you just put a flat bottom on your courgette, just makes it easy to work with. We've just had a message there for Mary saying Cameron was doing a great job. She's not going to acknowledge that. You're not going to say anything. They do say, though, behind every great man... Okay, so you can stay there, Mary. I'll be back in the flash. So we're going to poke those curls yet in with the beans. Again, a little bit more stock. I think it's just great to cook outside when you can and you certainly get weather like this. And I don't know if you can, you, you've been hearing in the background, we're kind of inundated with pheasants around here. And um, I just think it's a cruel irony that they created such a lovely creature, the, the, the cock pheasant, you know, the beautiful colours and all that kind of thing. And then Give it a noise, it makes it sound like a klaxon. I think I'm sat here in my kitchen in uh, County Durham, Brian, with um, view envy. View envy, yeah. I mean, it is. We, we use the, um, when we do our barbecue courses, we use the, the hashtag barbecue with the view or grills in the hills. I think that's a very apt way of describing it. Right, a little bit of tarragon to finish these bean stews off and we're not far away, folks. And some chives. Again, just rolling that knife through. Now, when we're talking to people in the school, knife skills is quite a popular course that we do. We get a lot of people that like cooking, um, but find the preparation very frustra uh, frustrating. So they like to cook, they like to eat, but the peeling and the chopping, you know, uh, frustrates them. So if we come back onto the board, Mary, what we just say to people. <laughs> oh, she, Mary hates this bit. Yeah. So she hates watching me chop and slice. Um, especially when I'm doing the classes. And as you know, we, we sort of look around the kitchen as we're doing it. So we'll be chopping away, but looking around, seeing what the naughty chefs have been up to. So she's going to try and film this while covering her eyes. So say so you can travel along the chives like that. But if you do that, you're going to make half the number of knife cuts. You do that, you're going to make even less knife cuts. So if you can just stack it together, you can change the angle of your knife if you want to be a bit fancy and flute the chives. 
I was doing that once and the lady just looked up and uh, as I looked up, the lady was shaking her head and she just said, Brian, life's too short to flute jives. So I'm going to divide that between both, both pans. And then normally when we're at Dems as well, we just we make a point of this bit and just say to the blokes, if you pay attention to this bit, you might see something new. This is called tidying up after yourself. So when you've finished, take a cloth with warm soapy water, bring the food debris to the edge of the board and then magically bring in your other hand and pop the contents of your board into you. That's what Louise says to me quite a lot when I'm cooking at home now, Brian. She says, you're not at work now, you know, you haven't got KPs around you to clean up after you. <laughs> That's right, isn't it? So, yeah, I, I don't always say to the blokes, if you don't know where the, where the bin is, um, it's probably near the fridge where your beer is. So just point <laughs> that out to them. Do you find that? Do you find that you cook differently at home? Yeah, very much so, yeah. I bet you ate well last night, didn't you? Sorry? I bet you ate well last night. Well, they ate well last night. As I was behind the screen for the next demonstration, they, all the food disappeared. So we're doing the, so we've got no fancy plates, just nice outdoor enamel plates. And just a little reminder for me, um, all the uh, 20 years of judging the Young Chef competition hasn't been left on me. I've learned that plating slightly to the left of the plate is quite trendy. So we're going to do that. This is actually um, food that you should just bung into a bowl, grab a beer or a glass of wine and, and just eat it. It's not, obviously not fancy food. This is Wee Chef. A lot of people know Wee Chef. Wee Chef comes to all the festivals with us. Very often he'll get kidnapped by one of the producers usually Marie Powell of Powell's Pies. And she'll take him round the festival. We don't know what's happened to him until um, we, we see pictures on Facebook later in the day. Uh, and it normally ends with beer or wine. He comes back a bit tipsy. You can't beat a good castle, eh, can you? You just, you just can't, Craig. I mean, this, this has just been put together in sort of 10, 15 minutes. But that dish, slowly stewed. And then we'll put that beef rib on top, on top of that. And then that's just a good plate of barbecue food. Pop that over here. Let's don't forget the veggie. Just to cut in there, sorry guys. Oh, hold on, let me count my microphone on this one. What was that, mate? Cut. Have we still got you, Craig? I'm still here. I'm just communicating with the next studio. Oh, multitasking. Well, I'm trying.
Okay, so just while Craig's doing that, again, just vegetarian version. And I've roasted some aubergine in cumin and garlic powder. Again, just for a little bit of texture. Bit of crunch. And then our last thing to do is just to carve the, uh, the brisket. Tripod escaping down the patio. Just careful with that. Now, when we made the brazen liquor for this, said we used essential cuisine veal you. what's going to happen to that liquor now as it cools it's going to set you're going to get a fantastic smoky jus from it that can go forward into other dishes just uh, tidy away some of this debris Obviously, what, what uh, goes off to, to my right down here, uh, you can see right across the Cheshire Plain and uh, <coughs> into the hills beyond. And quite famous around here for cheese, making cheese. It used to be a form of currency. And there used to be gangs hundreds of years ago that used to go around stealing the cheeses from the farms. And they used to hide them in graveyards because the temperature in the tombs and things like that and the, and the humidity was just perfect for storing cheese. So let's just pop a glove on and cut into this holy cow brisket. For the chefs and the curious amongst you as well, the, uh, the brisket, if you just come up a second, the, the brisket is the pectoral muscle that goes across there. So it's quite, it's, uh, it's quite tough, which is why it needs this, this level of cooking. And this isn't the whole brisket. So a whole brisket has like a flat and a point on it. And that's what we're looking for, guys. Okay, you're looking for that pink ring that just goes around the outside, which is the smoke ring. Yeah, have a look on the other side as well. Okay. So you just see that that smoke ring that's going around there. Okay. Okay. You could have a pot of barbecue sauce with that. Just dip it into the barbecue sauce. Okay, so really sorry about the technical issues in the middle of all that. Pour myself a beer now. I think you deserve one after that, Chef. 
It's just to take away the smoke effects. That's all it is, Craig. I'll take really that want... as an excuse any day, Brian. I don't really want one. So listen, guys, um, thank you for letting me be part of this festival uh, and the event. Um, we've really been missing the, uh, the, dem the dem scene, so to speak, and just meeting up with, with everybody and our colleagues. And uh, it's been a great two days. It's not over yet, but cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Brian. Thank you very much for that. As informative as ever, the legend that is Chef Brian Meller. Um, so, yeah, we'll just, just go back over a little bit about the hospitality action thing. Let's get people digging a bit deeper in their pockets and get, and get some, money, some money for an amazing charity. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've got, uh, you know, Martin that was on before. Uh, he's on the Northern Board of uh, Hospitality Action. Some really good friends on there, like Dawn, Kevin, Caroline, names that probably won't mean um, much to, to anybody. But these are real people working within the hospitality industry that know our business, uh, know the needs, uh, know what, you know, where the weak areas are and that kind of thing. And it just, they put on amazing events throughout the year um, and, and raise tens of thousands for the charity. We're a small, it's a small charity that, that looks after our colleagues. So if we can hit that thousand pound by tonight, that's we're gonna make a real difference to someone. Absolutely, 100%. So from us at um, the Northern Virtual Hospitality Food and Drink HQ, and to you, Chef Legend Brian Meller, and for thank you for taking part in this for the last couple of days as well, because you've been a real linchpin um, with some of these other demonstrations that, that we've done out there. Thank you very much. And what we'll do is we'll just click to a quick video of where, we're, where this money's going to go. Thank you very much. And take yes, care. So See you all soon. Ali Hoyle, Catering Manager. Peter Molar, Dorman. Ricardo Oliva, concierge. Ulrich Edwards, concierge assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, cafe owner. Ioana Giorgio, junior sous chef. Nuno Pinto, bartender. Mark Black, head porter. Andrea Demir, receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, apprentice chef. Federica Pinna, pastry chef. Sabino Mazzone, pastry chef. Kimiri Birchke, Barista Supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, Sushi Head Chef. Mitchell Collier, Duty Manager. Anna Grabczewska, Public Area Cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong? Say to Craig.